Hi, my name is Monica Opperman, and I am the lead uh, for evangelization strategies in the Office of Evangelization and Discipleship. I welcome you to this virtual walkthrough, hoping to equip you to run the rescue project. So first of all, uh, let's start with prayer, uh, asking uh, the Lord to send us his Holy Spirit, to send the Holy Spirit among us so that we can uh, hear and that I can say what he wants us to, um, to, to, to expose here, whatever he wants us to talk about. And um, we ask really the Holy Spirit to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, I'm going to share my presentation that I have prepared for you. It is here. And um, then, of course, we uh, already went through um, this uh, first light of prayer. And the uh, reason we're here because we are being rescued and we want to rescue others. So rescue people, rescue people. And uh, we had had 90 people already that came to the chancery in person to receive uh, some trainings for equipping. And uh, so, but, but we know that you weren't able to be there. And uh, so we decided to do this virtually. Nevertheless, it's not going to be the same because we're not going to have hospitality. We're not going to be able to talk in person and do this uh, really much more um, spontaneous, in a much more spontaneous way. So I'll do my best and uh, know that I am um, always uh, to serve you and to help you uh, get to know the Rescue Project better. Uh, we're going to cover the basics, the content, how to do a practical mind to the small group and the prayer ministry. Why? Why of the Rescue Project? I recommend people to see uh, these, uh, the Rescue Project, which is um, uh, a, a trailer that Father John uh, has uh, for the Rescue Project. We probably won't see it here because it's just uh, a little um, difficult uh, to do it in, in recording, but I do recommend that you see it. So uh, we, uh, the, the reason really, and you know that because you're familiar with the rest of the project, is to be overwhelmed by the gospel. That's the main reason we're doing this. And of course, to, after being overwhelmed by the gospel, to surrender our lives to Jesus and to be mobilized in mission. Um, why we are, are we doing this in the Archdiocese of Atlanta? Well, because we have here, you see here the the, the big, uh, beautiful logo for the Eucharistic Revival, because we are in Eucharistic Revival. And, um, you know, it's a process of three years, just like a kickoff of all this. It's a process of three years, and we are right here in the middle of the parish year, with Rescue Atlanta September 9, that you most of you probably attended. Then Father John uh, Ricardo uh, ran the priest retreat September 11 to 14. And then we have these rescue equipping days, September 18 and September 14, and now the virtual. So we are preparing ourselves to understand what Jesus did for us so that we can appreciate the Eucharist much better. There's so many beautiful resources that the National Eucharistic Congress has put. Uh, we're going to have a National Eucharistic Pilgrimage on June 21 to 23. They're passing to Atlanta with beautiful events that we're going to have uh, for all cultures. And then uh, we're going to all head out Supposedly, most of us are going to go to Indianapolis to the National Eucharistic Congress and coming renewed and revived for the 2025 Atlanta Eucharistic Congress on June 20 to 21. So I want to ask you a question. Why, why do you want to run the Rescue Project? Why do you want a rescue project at your parish, at your school, at your house? So you can pause for a few minutes and share with the others why do you think you're running, you want to run this rescue project. And um, I'm going to have start presenting what uh, all pertains to the, uh, the details. And the resources are marvelous. You can find everything at the rescue project on U.S., now, I divide it here into two areas just to make it uh, easier for you. Uh, there's nine episodes. 
uh, which is basically the rescue project in itself. And it's accompanied by a guidebook. A participant, each participant have their, can have their own guidebook. Uh, and then uh, both in English and in Spanish. Now for the team, for all of you that are going to be running it, 11 equipping videos, nine launching series of a CDR guidebook, resources, and marketing resources. And I'm going to go through each one of these things. First of all, the episodes. You can see uh, there's nine episodes uh, on beautiful things. Uh, and, and as we go through this um, equipping uh, virtual run-through, we're going to be uh, seeing more of them. But it's basically about why stories as important what the question and why is there something rather than nothing and really starts uh, further deepening into the enemy and the enemy and how it's even worse for different cases that he presents and uh, then what if anything has got done about it is these questions that are very evangelizing is a way of eliciting the correct man of really telling our story the story of salvation and uh, then after we realize what God had done about this, then what difference did it make? And and we have uh, two chapters for the Holy Spirit, which has wor words is not enough, and the clarity of the mission. Then, of course, we have them in Spanish, the exact same thing, beautifully dubbed, and uh, also with subtitles in Spanish. The companion guides you download or you can buy at the rescueproject.us. Uh, they are in English. One is for the participant and one for the facilitator. And guía de la historia, guía para facilitadores en español también. The same thing. Now, for the team. For the team, uh, these uh, resources, you know, like these videos are only in English. But uh, if you understand a little bit, uh, I think you can benefit a lot. Or if you're the leader and you can just help others go through these. It's incredible equipping uh, videos. If you didn't have Monica, this will be enough. The only thing is that some people have asked us for help on how kind of like help them, um, you know, kind of manage all these resources and understand them better. It's uh, several chapters about uh, the different uh, aspects of the whole rescue project, uh, the small groups, the how to run it, in, even home groups, the retreat, the prayer ministry, everything about music, about worship, what is next about it. And they explain, of course, uh, all, all the details about this work. They, they have everything on their website. Now, these launch live streams are an extraordinary asset because once um, Acts 29 launched the Rescue Project, they started doing weekly uh, webinars with Mary and Father John live with uh, all our audience here. And it was wonderful because they were going um, chapter by chapter of episode by episode of the Rescue Project. So they were tackling the different elements, the different challenges, uh, pastoral questions. And they, of course, they had questions and answers. So I do highly recommend that if you are the leader of the rescue project, uh, that you are a leader at your parish or at your school, uh, that you really watch all these so that you understand deeply uh, all the nuts and bolts about the rescue project. Their facilitator resources are in the facilitator section. Remember, the only thing you have to do is open an account. Everything is for free. And then in that account, you have access to extra resources like these ones, uh, uh, prayer and worship. They have a kind of enormous amount of beautiful files, really well done, including resources on how to run these small groups, even surveys so that at the end of the uh, of your of your experience, you can ask your participants how it was. Uh, then um, I'm gonna recommend to you that when you are training your team, I'm get, got back to these the equipping uh, videos, that when you're coming, you really do not miss a why and more. This is an indispensable video for everyone in your team to watch because that's the only way you are going to understand what this is. Now, uh, all, as I was saying before, is downloadable, free. The only thing you can open your member account, the website is rescueproject.us. 
So we in the chancery have experienced it twice. And then, of course, we did the large, uh, big, uh, uh, large and, and big and enormous uh, rescue Atlanta live. And uh, we um, are kind of like speaking out of experience. We had two beautiful experiences, one on a smaller scale where all our team went through the videos we had each one had their own uh, personal launch. It's just it's just an exploratory. Then we offer it in the chancery after mass, after afternoon mass. We all had lunch together and we had the small group discussions. It was beautiful. People got very uh, immersed into it. And we even have one of our bishops that attended um, most regularly. Now, where to start? My advice is to pray, pray, and pray more. Uh, pray, pray with your pastor and your parish or school leadership. Pray uh, who will be part of your planning and executive team and also who to invite, parishioners, friends, leaders. And then I will suggest you binge on all episodes, meaning, I mean, don't just like, uh, you know, with a prayerfully binge on all episodes, you and your team, so you can understand what they are and their content, and also uh, equip your team and distribute roles. It's, it's just that's very indispensable. That's where you start. Prayer, getting to know the whole meaning, and then equipping your team. Take your time, especially really to train everybody. Do not rush. Don't say, okay, we have to start next month. And Father said we need to start and we have to start. Limit your numbers also according to capacity. Maybe you start very small and you keep growing. The Rescue Project is not just a video series. It really reflects the culture and principles of Acts 29, which are ambitious for God and his kingdom, authentically human and docile to the Holy Spirit. Where can you run the rest of the project? You can run in parishes, schools, and homes, of course, even in cafes. Um, who is it for? It is for everyone. It, it, it is for everyone. It is, uh, you can do it for people in the pews, for RCIA, for the fallen away, for the nuns, for actually the ages are really junior high and up. And then, of course, for the clergy. How do you run that? Small group, small group context. But I wanted to bring about these principles that Acts 29 have underlined and expressed uh, for us this beauty, human, and accompanying. Beauty, whatever you do in ministry, do it beautifully. For us, um, when we did in the chancery, we prepared, we had our team uh, of colleagues first, but we saw the, the rescue project, everybody was convinced, everybody was on fire. So then we uh, started to present it in a beautiful way, presented nice tablecloths, presented a nice table, and that is some simple arrangements, but try to do it beautiful as you were receiving people at your home. Many people feel that they're expected, they're loved. It's like when you open the door at your home, you just greet everybody, right? And you serve good food. You try to serve good coffee, even especially if you're doing it in the morning. Bring color materials, meaning invest, 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 and you will have a return. Now, uh, human. So it was beauty, human. This is a place of vulnerability. That's an indispensable part of the rescue project because there's no judging, there's no teaching, there's no criticizing, and people are engaged uh, with each other, building a community, not as individual person that would come here to talk about our personal things, but we're trying to build a community. And, of course, it's led with love, and because love uh, builds a bridge where trust passes over, do you remember how is the process of conversion for somebody? It all starts with trust, and that bridge of trust is built with love. Accompaniment, listening, listening to one another earns, listening to another person earns you the right to be heard. This is so deep. Because we sometimes want to convince people to talk to them 
and we end up intruding into into their personal uh, lives or in their personal opinions. And this is what the Pope called the art of has called the art of company in Evangelii Gaudium 169 which is really he's asking everybody to learn this art of accompaniment, which teaches us to remove our sandals before the sacred ground of the other. That makes a space of that is reassuring, reassuring that uh, is a place of healing, of freedom, and of encouragement, growth, uh, encouraging growth in the Christian life. Accompaniment, think about it, is at the service of evangelization, just like the walk to Emmaus. Just walk with others into the heart of Christ. That's what the Rescue Project is. So beauty, human, and accompaniment. Oh, I, I meant to uh, change this, but it was it was a little um, you know break for everybody. The key ingredients. The key ingredients um, in the Rescue Project are prayer, worship, food, watching the episode, and then small group discussion, and the retreat. Uh, uh, I was already uh, showing you the big uh, screen with all the videos. Uh, uh, there's the first um, four, five, and six. Four, first four videos are going to be very strong. It's about the bad news. Then the good news come, five and six. And seven and eight is an opportunity for our participants to learn about the Holy Spirit and to receive the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful time of prayer, seven and eight, and that's why they go together and go in a retreat. And the last one is getting clarity on the mission. Uh, the Rescue Project goes with, of course, a food that we were talking about, a wonderful time for sharing. And then it's the prayer and worship. Uh, we always recommend to have five minutes of spontaneous prayer and also uh, of uh, worship, lyrics and music. You can put there's many Catholic, beautiful Catholic uh, authors, Christian authors. We have beautiful songs of praise and worship to the Lord. And of course, in the video and the discussion, everything is designed to engage and inspire conversation. Uh, the videos are between 30 and 40 minutes and uh, with the discussions and so uh, another 20 minutes. So we will be talking about, you know, meetings of uh, one and a half to two hours. And then you close. Uh, I, I ask at this moment to have your guides. If you have your guides that you already downloaded or if you purchase them and you have your books, I, I think it will be time to distribute them now. And then on page um, X, uh, 14 of the facilitator guide, it's a description of which are the, uh, the, the different roles that are needed basically to form a team to run the rescue project. First of all, a coordinator, that is basically the person that is overseeing the initiative, the session leader at every session. There might be parishes that are running several sessions of the rescue project. So each session needs a director, needs a, that is going to be the MC and it's going to be the key leader, the timekeeper, uh, and, uh, and that is going to be directing the tables and the facilitators and the co-facilitators, uh, touching base with the hospitality team and with a food team and the worship team. So the most important thing I want to show you in this slide is observe in the red the charisms, the charisms that are advised for the fruits of this initiative. Of course, you know, you need to have a person that has a charism of helps to be able to be in the food team. Otherwise, this person is going to explode and say, no, I don't want to do it. Uh, same thing for hospitality. But you need a charism of administration, parastering, and passion of the gospel to be the coordinator of the whole initiative. So check it out. I think it's very good. Now, what is a small group? In the small group, it should be a place of rest, of listening, of friendship in Christ, of understanding, of vulnerability. I heard Mary Giffel saying this. We are trying to get back any territory the enemy has stolen so, uh, from us. So be connected. Be connected. That's the most important thing. And then the ideal number for the small group is 10, eight guests, one facilitator, one co-facilitator. I will explain the roles in a minute. A facilitator and co-facilitator, if you can see this picture, look at the smile. of There's this joy on this girl. Be a host and not a teacher. 
do not have an answer to every question and you should not, there might, probably won't be any questions, but in, if in the discussion comes up a question, just don't start teaching, uh, especially now this is because in the doctrine, if you can, you can offer help according to the catechism, bring your catechism, bring your Bible to the sessions and encourage a conversation. And balance this conversation. Don't allow one person to be the talkative one and the other one's a silent, but never either we don't suggest that you put anybody on the spot like okay and what do you think just just let and pray for the holy spirit so the facilitator is the person that is going to be basically the lead of the group and the co-facilitator is going to be the prayerful person that is going to be in the back of the scenes in a way helping out at the table clearing out the food or the bringing more water but also praying for each one of each and every one of the persons in the team be welcoming authentic joyful be a listener. Be ready to love. So what I'm going to suggest is here for the facilitator and facilitator to read carefully each chapter's pastoral notes. We're going to see that in a minute about the pastoral notes. But every chapter, every episode, at the end of the episode in your facilitator guide, you're going to see there are pastoral, pastoral notes, uh, which are going to talk about the um, difficult and sometimes very difficult um, uh, situations uh, that are brought about in the videos. I here recommend a practicum uh, at this moment, which is basically you go to the rescue project.us on the resources, and under Get Equipped, you might, um, of course, for this, you have to log into your account. But you go to the small group facilitator training, and you're going to find a box like this, the one you're seeing on my screen. And uh, it has uh, all these beautiful videos, all these beautiful files that uh, uh, were made uh, for all of us to use. They're for free. Uh, just print uh, some of the materials for training. And it's just so much fun. It's a fun time so that somebody asks a quiet person, somebody has fallen away, somebody has, but there's always a facilitator and a co-facilitator. So you print that and you let people choose what they want to do. And it's just a great thing. Then um, you have to watch a video to be able to, what are you going to do? How are you going to discuss about? So there's a clip uh, from chapter one at the minute 2151 uh, on the video, which is what why stories are important. Here's the link to it. And uh, that's kind of like the face of the video. And I suggest that you see that. Whenever you finish, then you kind of like uh, recap and, uh, you know, regroup and say, okay, what did we do here? What did we learn? Then I want to talk about the retreat and prayer ministry. Um, at the beginning of the session, Please always these do these do these two together. You're gonna be begin your session normally with prayer and your may your meal your prayer, and the very first uh, uh, session uh, episode sorry is uh, words are not enough, and this is talking about the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful session. It's a little longer than usual. The one is about fifty minutes because it's um, Father John Ricardo is leading all of us in prayer beautiful reflections and there's some background music uh, from Damascus who you already heard on um, on September 9 and um, there's a prayer ministry and uh, it's that question of what does God want from me it is very important that you do this together because you have been bringing people are coming into a point where they understand what the sacrifices or the sacrifice of Jesus was in the cross. Why did boy did he do that for us? And then how he's left us his spirit. And, and then get to understand and get to know the spirit. So there's several people that don't know the spirit. And maybe I've been in trainings, even trainings where people have said, Monica, I've never prayed to the Holy Spirit before. I've never met the Holy Spirit. And they have my have but they might have not realized and do it in such an intentional way. So this is a beautiful, wonderful retreat and prayer ministry. Please do not skip it. My considerations is do not shorten it either. 
Do not skip the retreat and do not shorten it. Make it special. You can go outside, you can have a special meal, music. And moreover, I'm uh, suggesting that maybe parishes want to get together. If you want to, um, you know, share with a neighboring parish, maybe you're seeing this video with, uh, with friends or you know some friends that are running the rescue project, ask them. And maybe you can run your retreat together. Um, please follow your guide for prayer ministry and practice, 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 because practice makes perfect. So watch the prayer ministry and the equipping videos. I want to talk about the pastoral notes. Chapter one, two, and three are very strong topics because their purpose is to see, feel, and live, and live what evil can do. And what would be the state of our race had Jesus not come and died for us? You see, so in chapter one, uh, there's a mention of concentration camps. On chapter two, 9-11. On chapter three, it's a very uh, and long, much longer uh, talk about uh, sexual abuse. He, Father John Ricardo's personal one. And then chapter four about human trafficking. And the purpose is not to suffer, but it's just these four chapters to know the bad news so that we can appreciate the good news. Uh, then be prepared. Be prepared. Have a list of resources. I am going to be attaching to this video some resources that we have our office prepared in pastoral care, office of pastoral care in the exercises prepared. So you can have a list of resources. And of course, always respond in friendship and compassion and follow up in a sense that talk to your pastor. If you heard something, especially a recent abuse, then uh, talk to the person, talk to the pastor. Of course, don't talk to the person behind the pastor. You tell the person, hey, let's go talk to Father, encourage the person, and, and then seek advice from your pastor on how to deal with this uh, situation because anything that has, um, you know, child protection and uh, abuse of, of um, in, in of, of minors, of course, and of vulnerable people needs to be uh, dealt with. So one of the things I'm here pointing, you know, putting little asterisks is advice about the upcoming content before the next session. So, for example, I would say if you are doing chapter one, right, thank everybody. You are the, uh, you know, MC and you thank everybody for the wonderful, you know, the, about what you did. It was a great meeting and everything. And you say, and, and you say, okay, chapter two, this is the name of the chart chapter is, um, you know, why is everything so messed up? And then, so you're going to say, okay, so we're going to be talking, Father is going to be talking about 9-11. And I want to warn you, I want to tell you about this in case, you know, there's any sensitivities about that or you have had any experience, please talk to me or talk to Father, um, you know, beforehand so that you can be prepared. Uh, but I, I really wanted to mention that to you, that is very important to advise about the upcoming content before the next session. Especially, for example, you're going to say, okay, we're going to talk about sex abuse uh, on the next session. And then... And then the following, it says, it's the, the chapter four is called, it's worse, it, it comes worse, it, what is, it's worse, it becomes worse. And it is, it's terrible because it's human trafficking too. So there are all these issues which purpose, remember, the purpose is only to show what would be the destiny of a race if Jesus had not come, if God had not sent his only son to save us. Uh, another point I wanted to talk in this uh, short uh, presentation is about the difference between Alpha and the Rescue Project. You know that we have in the Archdiocese uh, for many years, many of our parishes uh, run Alpha and uh, with great fruits. Uh, some parishes didn't because they probably, their pastor was not very uh, keen to, you know, the origin of the program or whatever, no? So, um, I wanted to make a difference. Oh, I jumped here. Oh, what happens here? Hmm. Next. Nope. Okay. So, um, no, it is here. So, um, the difference between them. This is um, Anglican, non-denominational, Alpha, Catholic. 
the rescue project, but it's not a Catholic alpha. That's very, very important. Um, and the alpha talks about the principles of Christianity in a beautiful way. It talks about, you know, there is God, there is Jesus, there is the Holy Spirit. Oh, there's a Bible, there's prayer. So it's really principles of Christianity, beautiful principles of Christianity. But the rescue project is about the gospel. It's about the kerygma. Uh, 11 weeks, and we have only eight weeks. There are nine sessions, remember, a retreat. Similar format, similar format in the way that there's a meal and there's a video and there's conversation and there's friendship and there's camaraderie. There's certainly similar format. In, Al in uh, Alpha, I remember very much in our trainings, they will emphasize that Alpha, we need to provide a space uh, and independence for people, a space for the Holy Spirit to work and have independence of people. In the rescue project, of course, we are also providing a space for the Holy Spirit to work, but we recognize that accompaniment is necessary and actually is encouraged. So it's, there's nothing wrong about calling. Uh, you are the facilitator and, ca and calling on the phone somebody in your table and say, hey, how are you? Especially if that person had a hard time with one of the pastoral issues. Uh, just follow up with them. Feel comfortable. Accompaniment. Remember what accompaniment. There's an art. We are not going to be stepping in the, in the the into the sacred ground of people, but we are accompanying them. And we're accompanying them. We're listening to them. And we are walking with them in faith, in the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, we uh, what about if you wanted to start your rescue project for Lent, for example? Okay. Well, we kind of figure out, and we probably will recommend uh, to start either that first last week of February or even earlier, the the, um, the the week of the 23rd, I think, of February, so that you can start that with episode one, two. Uh, the 14 is um, holy, I mean, uh, as Wednesday. And uh, so the way these I will recommend is so that by Holy Week, before Holy Week, you're done. So on the 24th of March is going to be um, a Palm Sunday. So by then you are finished, right? And, and if you want to run, um, uh, you really want to start your, your training, I mean, like today, <laughs> so that everybody gets to know about it. You start your team training. Now, there is a question. We are used in the Catholic Church to be the a lot of consumers. We are consumers, right? Consumers of programs. Our parishes are, we just do some initiative in the parish and we know a lot of people are going to ask, okay, what's next? What do we need next? Even when we were running Alpha, they would say, uh, don't start Alpha before, uh, unless you know what you're going to offer next, because then you're going to leave people there just all excited and everything. But I really want to, this is a beautiful take, and I learned this from Mary and Father John, that we can't be paralyzed about what we are going to be, do next. We have to stop that. Trust that God has a perfect plan for your parish. And, I mean, you can learn their practices, but you don't necessarily need to apply every single thing that my parish, my friend, my other parish did, because it might not work for your context. You have to give the initiative back to God. And this is the most beautiful thing. Uh, Father John even offers, he has some videos, some talks. One beautiful that he offered to some deacons in Detroit about uh, giving the initiative back to God. They mentioned, Father uh, Rene or Cantala Mesa, the more time we devote to praying over a problem, the less time will be we need to resolve it. We need to restore the power to God, meaning the power of deciding, the initiative, the freedom to intervene at whatever moment in life of, in, in the life of his church. They talk about this trading our rowboats. We are rowing is sometimes against a current and then trading that for a sailboat. The church is not a rowboat driven forward by the strength and skill of the arms of those who are in her. And we sometimes see that everything depends on us, right? Everything depends on our own skills and our arms, on our imagination or our connections. But really the sailboat is driven by the wind, which blows it along from above. 
Now, we really try to tell you avoid relying, <laughs> stressing again, relying on your own ideas. Because that might not be what the Holy Spirit is asking, right? Um, and then sometimes copying and pasting what other parishes are doing. Also, it, it might not work for you, as I mentioned, um, uh, you know, a couple of seconds ago. In, your context might be different. Uh, the um, personality of your parish, the personality of your groups might be different. So what worked with um, neighboring parish A might not work for you or it didn't work for them, but it's working for yours. So pray with your pastor and team. Ask the Lord to show you three things. This is hard. Ask the Lord, where is your parish most sick? Where is our largest wound? Asking the Lord in prayer. Father John and Mary, they give us an example all the time. And we have done it personally uh, in, in the Arsizes with our team and with a larger team within the Arsizes about Going down to the chapel on your knees or sitting, if you can. I can't kneel very well now. But um, but but asking the Lord if you can have um, adoration, if you can have exposition, and spend um, some time with Jesus and ask him to, where is that your parish is most sick? Where is the largest wound? And that could be not only parish, your school even your family, yourselves, and show us health strategy for our parish. Uh, and then finally, asking God to help you find the strategy for parish in response. So this has to be in, in a really completely prayerful mode. You see, this is my emphasis about saying, let's not rely on what others did or just my greatest idea about this. This has to come as a result of prayer. It has to come the Holy Spirit guiding you all at all times. So uh, here is a beautiful video about... Uh, what happened on September 9? It's a surprise because many of you have not seen it. I don't think I, we can show it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Some of us are finding ourselves here this morning and the truth you most need to hear God say to you is simply this. You matter to me. I know what you've done. That doesn't matter to me. You matter to me. That's why I willed you into existence. I just couldn't imagine the universe without you. So I created you. And even though time and time and time again, you've either not sought me or forgotten me or ignored me, it doesn't matter. I still love you. I'm right here. You're my daughter. I've carved your name into my hands. And I'm crazy about you and I'm gonna prove it to you today. I'm invigorated. I, I, I'm excited. I, I found myself uh, looking forward to going home and sharing with my boys and sharing with other people and, and spreading the faith that uh, Christ has left for us. It has changed forever the way I see the Eucharist and the way I come to Mass and the way I talk to people. And it is just so powerful. 
it's amazing for today for me because when Jesus is coming and my mouth I'm saying Jesus it is the person very important for me So questions, questions. I don't think we're here. I'm here next to you to answer any questions, but send me an email. Talk to me. Call me. And I'll be more than glad uh, to, to talk to you uh, in person to discuss anything that you have not, um, you know, understood really well about these. And uh, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. And remember, we have a lot of parishes interested in running this initiative for both um, the English speaking and also our Spanish speaking brothers and sisters. And I'm just so happy and glad that we have everything available in Spanish for them. So everybody can do the same thing at the same time in their, you know, everybody can be talking about experiences, the same thing at the parish. So uh, we'll see. Don't forget, prayer is the very first thing you have to do to decide. Hopefully this will, um, you know, walk. Uh, we can walk you in your discernment in, um, and pray with your pastor. Talk to your pastor. Talk to him. And uh, don't be shy of doing it at home, bringing friends and uh, a family maybe and uh, experiencing this beautiful, beautiful thing on a weekly basis. Okay, God bless you and uh, everything to the glory of God. Uh, we give you thanks, Almighty God, you who live and reign in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you later. Bye-bye.